Welcome to Florida Real Estate TV. I am here at the celery fields in Sarasota, Florida. This is basically a um, stormwater facility. Um, however, it's really like a park. And then this hill that I'm currently climbing up. So I want to talk to you about a scam that's going on. And this is nationwide, but it's happening a lot in Florida. And this is the vacant land scam. So if you have ads, if you're seeing ads, for vacant land for sale, you should do a little bit of due diligence before buying that land, especially if it looks like a really good deal. So I'm gonna be going over an article that uh, kind of describes what are the sellers really looking for when they're looking to scam somebody and how can you pay attention and how can you protect yourself to make sure that you're gonna be okay. I hope that this saves somebody from losing a whole bunch of money buying vacant land um, so if you have vacant land, there's also a few things you can do to protect yourself. So to start with, here's what the scammers are doing uh, in order to identify some good, you know, victims in terms of the land that they're going to be selling to the next victim, which is the home buyer or the buyer of the land, I should say. So you start by looking at public records and they're looking for vacant land with an absentee owner that's the beginning an absentee owner is somebody who does not live at that property or anywhere close to it usually it's somebody who lives out of state or better yet out of country now please don't take this information and don't be pulling a scam out there this is to educate people how to protect themselves so once they found that, they then look for a, uh, they do a quick record search to see if there's a mortgage on it because they want to sell this piece of property to somebody. And yes, it can even run through a regular title company and uh, things can happen. Mistakes can be made and you still might end up buying somebody's land that's not yours and then have to give it back at the end. You know, and how big is this problem? Well, the FBI says that last year, $396 million of sales happened in this matter. $396 million worth of scams with vacant land only. And then there's scams with non-vacant land. And unfortunately, it's not just the buyers that get duped, right? The sellers uh, don't even know about it. And then real estate agents get duped sometimes too. So yeah, it's an extra layer of protection, but not always, you know, sometimes people are inexperienced and they're not sure what to look for and they get taken advantage of. And then on top of that, the title companies or the closing uh, agents, uh, they also could get duped because people are pretty tricky. So those people that are tricky and um, and think of an elaborate scheme, you know, it's just a numbers game uh, before they get caught um, or before it's just a numbers game before they have success. They're going to go and do this, you know, to 1000 properties. And if 10% close, that's free money on 100 pieces of land. So what are the scammers doing? They're finding the piece of land, posing as the owner, and they're gonna find a real estate agent to take the listing and post it for sale on the MLS, which is really interesting. That they're kind of going the legal channel. But why is it that they're going to find uh, you know, an agent? Well, a lot of agents will not check the photo ID of the owner so or of the client you know they're gonna go and list the property sign an agreement um, you know provide all the documentation to the broker they're gonna do everything they have to do but it's not common practice to ask for a valid photo ID that can then be somehow verified but of course making fake IDs is not too hard anyway so there's a way around that already but that is, you know, maybe one little step that agents could take uh, in order to, to prevent um, from getting kind of wrapped up in one of these scams, right? But the first thing that an agent can do is pay attention to the price because usually what these scammers will do is they're gonna go and list it at a price that's just too good to be true in order to tie it up, get it under contract immediately, find a cash buyer so that there's no, no uh, mortgage or loan company going through, you know, more documents that might find, uh, find an error in this listing. 
The name that they're using for these scammers are Tidal Pirates. And these Tidal Pirates, it's unbelievable what they're doing. They are literally forging deeds and other uh, public documents. They use um, fraudulent or forged deeds and other documents con to convey title to a property. And often these scams go undetected until after the money has been wired to the scammer in the fraudulent sale. On the day of closing, you know, the money is in and then the money goes out and then the agents get paid and everyone gets paid and gets their money so you know it is a, a quick transaction at the end where everything happens real quick so if anything slips through the cracks at the very beginning well that's when there's you know a good chance that that there, this money will never be recovered okay so let's go over what this article talks about as the three different uh, warning signs that you can really pay attention to and it, whether you're an agent or a buyer in one of these situations or just a regular buyer of vacant land you can double check these three things okay number one they say that the seller is requesting to sell a vacant property for less than its fair market value you know that's not necessarily a red flag but to me it's a yellow flag where if someone really has to unload maybe every agent should have like a little precautionary measure to take where they go and find out you know why and to see if they can document anything if it was uh, you know something that was given in a probate well see if the probate was legit you know there's a little bit of extra work and maybe maybe ask for the photo ID maybe ask for a video call because these sellers are almost always not in person uh, available by phone only uh, you know there's already some yellow other yellow flags that could quickly turn into red flags if there's enough of them right so when you have one of these underpriced properties that this article is mentioning um, know that that should be a little flag for you and you should do just a little bit more now to prevent any buyers from uh, getting scammed by this the next is the second one is the seller only communicates electronically now I already mentioned this um, many of these imposters that are, are out of state or from a different country and will decline face-to-face -face meetings well obviously I mean they're trying to keep themselves anonymous but you know you can't record uh, audio without uh, dual party consent in the state of Florida but you can record video I mean I'm not a lawyer I may be wrong in that law but I'm pretty sure that's the case so whatever you do I have never taken a listing where I haven't actually you know talked to the people uh, or done a zoom meeting or done something along those lines so I highly recommend um, that if you're you know an agent that you go through that extra step and you try to get the confirmation that that at least that's been checked by the the agent or by the listing agent or by someone else okay the last one is that the seller typically requests that the closing take place in a remote using a remote notary so if you don't know where remote notary is basically a notary that will travel to the location of the seller and we'll get all documents signed by that individual now this doesn't work if it's abroad uh, if it's in a different country they have to go to the uh, uh, consulate the US consulate I believe or maybe the embassy and get it notarized there but um, but when they're in the country then they'll ask to do the service but this isn't a, a red flag by any means this is just a little yellow flag because this is very common I've had many out-of-state sellers that have had to use remote notaries because they're not gonna fly down to Florida just to sign paperwork you know so that's not necessarily a red flag but it's something to think about and now the last thing that this article talks about is the responsibility of the listing agent and what should the listing agent do and they say that listing uh, real estate pros should do their due diligence to verify that any person claiming to be the seller is the actual owner and you know it's it's easier said than done because obviously a scammer is going to really fight to not reveal this information so I can understand that um, but once you have enough you know reasons um, for example you ask for um, photo ID and that's denied because some people don't want to share that um, then you ask for a deed the original deed maybe that is already registered in the county from a long time ago 
they may not want to provide that. And then you go ask for a second form of ID, you know, anything really, maybe a, a, a picture of a library card. You can, you can ask for so many different things. And once again, it's not being provided. You know, once you ask enough times and you don't get anything, well, maybe you have a scammer on your hands, you know? As a real estate agent, you should get the title company to select the mobile notary. Don't let that seller select the mobile notary because maybe they have, you know, a, a, a daughter or a cousin or a friend, a neighbor who's a notary. Well, that notary might have a fake notary stamp and it might be all a scam, you know, all put together. So have a, the attorney that's closing the deal or the title company select that notary and arrange it so that it's not actually happening through the seller's means. And if you are a buyer, don't don't ever send money directly to the seller. You always want to send money to the title company. And if you don't have a title company, um, reach out to me. I'll give you a great title company uh, that's actually very inexpensive and it's an attorney actually. So you even get some, uh, you know, a person to ask some legal questions to but don't ever send money directly to a seller. You want to send it to a third party that verifies all the paperwork, gets everything ready for you, packages it up nicely and collects your money and then they pay out the other side. And everyone has, you know, the state gets paid on the on the, the documents that need to be registered and the taxes and all of that. So you don't want to be in the middle of all of that because uh, if you're working with a scammer, if you're dealing with a scammer, you better believe you're going to end up on the bad side of this. I hope this video has helped you, you know, not fall prey to some of these land scams that are happening and it is happening quite a bit in Florida because we have a lot of vacant land owned by out-of-state absentee owners. So pay attention. If you have questions, please write a comment or uh, just reach out to me directly. Thanks.